Right, here we go, little ride. Check to see what the camera can pick up. It's quite a windy day, as per usual in the Netherlands. So it'd be a good test to see what uh, noise we get through the mic. It. That was my visor closing. Nice little saunter around today. I think I'm going to put my. Yeah, I'm in street mode. It's a bit more of an easier mode. Look on the uh, dash there. Just sort of. Uh, more of a pleasant cruising around kind of a setting. <clears throat> oh, a bunch of kids crossing the road, look there. Be a bit careful. Around this uh, parked up truck. Engine oil's come up to temperature on my dash now. Tires are cold, so no mucking around. Huh. Alright, maybe a bit of mucking around. <laughs> so yeah, turning left. Now we've got some re really weird rule here, give way to the right. So it's a 60 km an hour road and you can just pull out essentially. Uh, strange rules here in the Netherlands for some things. So you can see here, um, we're on a sort of B road, I guess. Uh, there's no centre white line, so I can, I'm assuming I can overtake. And then there, just to the left, there is um, a bike lane, a, a dual, per, you know, dual direction bike lane that you can walk on. And then what happens is, on this road, it's a weird, there's no give way lines on the junctions. So, for example, that there is a junction, there's no give way lines, and there's no give way lanes for the bikes or the cars. So it means that, first off, you've got to give way to a bike. That's the first thing, because if you run them over, you're in a lot of trouble. And then you have to give way to the right. So that there has got a line across it because that's just someone's driveway, so that doesn't count. But there is another road on the left, uh, two on the left and one on the right, or two on the right that have a, a different setup. So I'll keep an eye out for those and point them out as they're getting closer. And this is a 60k road, but there's no speed limit signs anywhere, you just have to know it, which I find a bit annoying. Um, here's another junction, you see it? So you've got a bike lane that crosses it. There's no give way signs anywhere, so you didn't know what was going on really. So if you're a foreigner, like I was when I moved here, I just would drive around the corner and the uh, bikers would shout at me, oh, were you trying to kill me, blah, 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 and I'm like, I didn't know. So it's uh, quite important to read the road rules of the places you're going to visit, if you're going to visit other countries. Uh, so you can probably see there that the dotted white line, where there's a driveway, it carries on. So it means that the person coming onto the road has got to give way. And uh, here's another road to your right, look, so no give way sign. So if there was someone there, which there isn't, we would have had to give them way to them even though they're on a 30 km an hour road and we're on a 60. I find it really odd. And here's some beautiful uh, roses here, look, on the side of the road. It's just someone's house. Well, they own this business as well, I suspect. And they're a rose grower, so there you go. That's the sort of thing you get in the Netherlands. So on this one, you will see, well, there you go, those little triangles, what they call shark's teeth, which means that they have got to give way to us. There's another little road on your left here, same as before, left and right. Look, that's a, that is a, a crossroads with no give way signs on it. So 
So uh, in reality, the roads in the Netherlands, certainly where I live, near the, near the city of Gouda, where the cheese comes from, I've got to be honest, it's pretty boring. It's just like cruising about, really. Um, there are no sort of real country lanes or back lanes to speak of. Um, there kind of are, but it's not like they are in England. So most people venture out of the country. They'll probably go to Germany, to the Black Forest, most of them, uh, if they want to go and do some proper riding. So here we go roundabouts look at this so there's like a curb in the middle so you've got to get in the right lane essentially so i'm going to cross i am indicating left and i am going to indicate right even though a lot of people don't bother i'm just going to wait and see where he goes i'm going to go around him no point to uh follow so on the road there you see the lines so it denotes i can go right or straight on so I'm going to go straight on. Nice fella there, fella across me. See my lifesaver. Little police depot there. So another little roundabout. This doesn't have any uh, concrete bollards. So you can see the little diamonds uh, for the giveaway. So we have to stop if someone's on the roundabout. I've indicated to come off. No need to do a lifesaver there because no one could have come round me. No one behind me for a long way. So, And this is sort of like uh, industrial mixed with housing. So it's, <laughs> the whole country is like this really. Everywhere you go, Belgium's the same. Right, here we go. So this is a... a a bridge underneath the railway and what we've got is a bike lane on one side and because of the bike lane there isn't enough room for two lanes of traffic for cars so we have to stop and wait which we will do and that's uh, a train line probably goes to um, Utrecht in the in the distance uh, that we're facing and uh, to Rotterdam behind us and it will go through Gouda. Gouda is like 20 minutes uh, either way to uh, those two cities and if you want to go to Amsterdam you have to stop somewhere and change and it's about 40-45 minute journey. Better to do it by motorbike. Oh there's a speed bump there. Oh dear. Bum, bum. So this is a typical Dutch countryside road, dead straight, speed limit is 60 or something like that, and uh, yawn, there's literally no fun to be had on a motorbike, unless your fun is to just cruise about at like 40 mile an hour, in which case come and live here, this is the most fun you'll ever have. Uh, there you go, loads of bicycles everywhere, that's quite normal. Um, you get these roadie bikes everywhere out there thinking that they're some sort of crisp broom or something. Of course, tractors. Farmers got to be uh, making the food for us to eat, right? And what happens when you get tractors everywhere? That's right, you get crap all over the road. There's some more. Uh, and I am led to believe actually that the Dutch farmers have a legal ob obligation to remove that from the road otherwise they've caused a, da a danger so I suspect later on today they'll be out with like a sweep once they've finished they'll be out with a sweeper and they'll actually sweep up their own rubbish which I think is a good idea um, yeah there you go this is a sort of rural part of the country which much of it does look like this I think 95% uh, oh, of the whole country is just flat fields with ditches in between uh, of, when you go further east there is some texture to the landscape so you do get um, you know trees and hills and uh, a little bit more going on uh, and there are some sand dunes as well there are some areas of sand dunes so Right, so I'm going to uh, try not to go on the motorway because it's a bit boring and uh, I'm just going to cruise about uh, trying to show a way 
around and there is lots there's always a couple of ways around everything um, uh, here in the Netherlands I would say most places you want to get to there's multiple ways to get there right left here little lifesaver there's no one there we've gone green I might just overtake them actually why not so another little under the road bridge and then this is a bit of a sort of sneaky way to get back to Gouda from where I store my bike so ah well it's uh just a little squirt get back down to the speed limit and uh that way I'll clear some distance between me and that car Some nice cows, uh, milking cows, I believe, everywhere. Look, mm -hmm, the milk, milky, milky. So, uh, a favourite thing on the Dutch roundabouts is that people don't indicate when they should, and they do indicate when they don't really need to. And then another thing is that people just pull out all the time in front of you, uh, and like. Yeah, if you're in a car, well, you know, they crash into your car, but on a motorbike, they put out in front of you on a motorbike as well, it's crazy. This is about the only road I know of for miles and miles that is actually crap. Everything gets resurfaced as soon as there's any kind of problems. Apart from this one road, I don't really know why. It's been like this for at least seven years since I moved to the Netherlands. And, uh in a pretty sorry state but we'll come around the corner here and we're into sort of like a trading estate area so I actually use a business here on the right hand side called Object Reclama and I use them there they are look I use them for making stickers for my business and uh, probably for my YouTube channel as well maybe get some t-shirts knocked up there's all kinds of things you get mowers here and uh, well, what other businesses have we got? There's furniture. There's that van that I tried to, to get by, but never mind. And uh, yeah, it's industrial area. It's all kinds of businesses. Just everything and anything you've never heard of. And here's that giveaway to the right. You see that big American truck just pulled out? Because he can, there's no giveaway sign. So we have to give way to him. And now we've got a a giveaway bridge this is a little bridge over a canal and this canal's fun because it's actually got houseboats on it and if you could see that there you go so uh you do get those from time to time on bits of water where the water is still um, i'm pretty sure that's not a river that'll just be a canal so houses don't move around much and I don't suppose there's much boat traffic either right American style stop sign so let's stop completely check everything and we're going to go up this little ramp and then we'll be up on the dike what they call a dike so they build these mounds along to stop they've got to look almost behind me on that one to stop the river from entering the land so that's actually the river Isel or the Gouds sorry that goes through past Gouda which is why the city of Gouda even exists and um, you can't see it behind the reeds at the moment but it is there look and then obviously there's industry that goes along from the river because boats will deliver some of the goods but uh, to directly to them sort of like holiday park houses but it's been turned into residential over to my left good morning sir another rider oh we're indicating left but uh, I'm gonna keep going yep safety first little cruise around there's a little kiddie dinosaur experience place to my left which I don't think enough people go to I 
think it's it's quite good now. It's worth going to if you visit Gouda and you've got kids. It's uh, you can cycle there from the centre. We're almost actually in the centre now, believe it or not. So uh, we're just turning right here. I'm not going to indicate. There's no one to tell. And then we're on one of these. See, this is brand new road here. Look, didn't need it, but it's brand new tarmac. And up the road there, there's a piece of road that's crap, and they've left it. It's literally just been done in the last week. This bit of road. So this is one of these roundabouts with a concrete plinth in the middle. So you've got to be in the right lane. Now he's indicating right, but he was in the wrong lane. So that was an interesting situation once again. Not indicating, not in, oh, he's indicating, not indicating. So I can't really go yet. Right, after this little Skoda. I'm indicating. That's it. So this now is the road into Gelder. And uh, this will be a slow little trip probably into here. I might just take you uh, right into the, where I can get to in Gelder. Most of it is um, you can't actually drive the vehicles in there at all. So the, the absolute centre. Uh, I think there are some times of the day that you can drive a car through there or a motorbike but essentially it is a pedestrian zone so I can't take you in there. I might just do a walk around in Gouda one day and uh, show some of the sights. And, uh, this is still very industrial. You've got houses to your left and industrial to your right and there's a dike to my right so on the other side of there is the water. So. This is actually quite a well-known chemical factory that's been here for years and years and years. And uh, it's quite smelly. People don't really want to live too close to it. So the houses are cheaper. Both sides of the road with a walkway over the top. A handy little clock up there that says it's 20 degrees, look. What, what nice weather, 11.30 in the morning. It's the last week of June, 2024. There you go, you can see there's a, um, a windmill up there, Windmoller in the Netherlands. And actually there used to be a castle on those grounds, that would have been like a fort there. And this was the entrance to the city of Gouda, which is about 750 years old. So if I turn left here, I've got a green light to go, just about. An eye out for bicycles all over the place. And here we go, this is the old, original canal taken off the river, which would have brought all the trading goods. And uh, many of these houses, they don't look that big from the front, but many of them are absolutely ginormous. They go quite far back. Um, and this would have been where the richer people would have bought houses and lived. And um, some of them have even private gardens uh, like little courtyard gardens that you can't see they're like enclosed and uh, we'll see how far we can get uh, we can get almost to the actual center i'll speed up a little bit and uh, it's quite beautiful here to be honest um there are nice little boutique kind of shops dotted about here and there it's worth walking around not just in the center of the center 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 but just to the outskirts of it because Gouda's quite a beautiful place. I mean, look, this is Gouda Museum. So, and these beautiful little houses, which are now shops at the bottom and living quarters upstairs. And then I'm just about, if I'm gonna just turn my head to the right, you will see Gouda Centre there. It's quite busy today. And then uh, we can cross over this way and follow that canal. Thank you, lady. And, uh, this is now a little restaurant here where you can sit and eat. I think it used to be some sort of cheese selling market where, you, where the boats could go along and they would barter their cheese. So it's quite pretty, as you can tell, under the trees here. Always amazes me that you can park right up next to the water like that. I'm sure plenty of bicycles are in that canal. 
Right, we've got a road closure. Of course we've got a road closure, it's the Netherlands. So, now we've got to work on a bit of my local knowledge here. Which is not fantastic, I will be honest with you. Don't know if I can turn right here or not. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I can. So let's turn up this way. Well, got a noisy Harley Davidson behind me. So. That's right, kids, this is the road. Then I think I can actually turn right here. Not your right of way, pal. There we go. And then uh, this is now along the side of the river. Some nice little restaurants on that here. This is actually a restaurant here on the left. I'm gonna pop my visor open. Hope the wind noise doesn't get too bad. Because it's too hot in my helmet. So yeah, lots of boats moored up. There is a harbour back there, a small harbour. Got to give way to my right there. There's that noisy Harley, look. So cool, what can I tell you? Pretty boats. People living on them, uh, I think all year round actually, um, which is quite cool. And I think if I go this way, I can keep going a little tour of the mm, almost the centre of Gouda. So I've still got to be aware that I've got to give way to my right. That's it, we'll go down this little bumpy old street, which I think is quite a beautiful street with nice trees. I actually looked at buying a house here, but. Uh, wasn't to be. And I imagine that the speed limit here is 30 kilometers an hour, so trying to stick to that. And I, I'm not sure what this building is, this tower. I should really know. I lived here for seven years, but it's actually, you could probably want me to tell on the camera, but it's actually wonky, like where it's a bit like the leading tower of Pisa. So it's known for being the wonky tower. And now we're um, we're actually at the other we're literally now at the other side of the high street uh, of the centre part of the middle of Gouda. Just to my right, you can't see anything just yet. But uh, back to the canal, a few more boats, some house boats as well. Oh, this is a no entry, so we can't go up that way. So that was lucky that I noticed that. Luckily no one behind me, so that's fine. Let's just go around this way and go back out. So there you go, you can see the, uh, the houseboats as well. And more of the same of the architecture, these nice old buildings. I mean, some of them are well, at least 100 years old, for sure. The home I live in here in Gouda, which is not far from here, is a hundred years old, so I suspect some of them are a couple of hundred years old and more in, in places. It's quite stunning really, like practically in the middle of the city here, but it really doesn't feel like it at all. And all these beautiful flowers and the waters next to you. And this is a a statue of a man with a donkey on his back, and if you see that, <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of famous story about it, which I don't know about. Right, so uh, here we go. So we're back where we were, that was a little circle. And then we've got to leave uh, this way. There you go, you can see up the canal from there. And uh, all of the, so I'm actually on top of a bridge right now. All of these bridges go up and down to allow boats to pass uh, in all directions. So, oh, another biker behind me. It's 
So as in England, there's a, a bicycle zone at the front of the traffic lights and um, quite often the bike traffic lights will go before the car one. There's a bit separate traffic light just for it to sit there on the pole. So in some junctions, that's the case. I think I'm going to sneak past him because otherwise it's pretty boring to watch the back of a Toyota Prius for two minutes while I drive down this little road. Um, there you go, it's the houseboats, you can, see, you can see people in them having their lunch. And there you go, she's scrubbing the deck and uh, hanging her washing out. And then there's some quite fancy boats. I'm not going to say this is a marina, but this is sort of a marina. nice I mean these are quite young trees here but in 10 years time there should be quite big nice trees and that'll be a really nice vibe along here they've spent a lot of money just recently making this nicer so I'm going to uh, where am I going to go I'm going to go left and underneath the train line so yeah I mean this is not the most architecturally joyous location I've got to be honest of Gouda this is probably the worst bit but that there that is the beginning of the high street there so um, you walk uh, if you turn left here by foot the train station is literally i don't know five six hundred meters so if you arrive by train you know it's a two three minute walk and you're in the center center of gouda which is i quite like that that's quite nice just up there on your left so a little underpass I think we're going to turn right here. I'm heading out towards the motorbike store just for a little little mooch around. And this is a really odd little junction. There's so much going on here. There's bicycle lanes and footpaths and give way to your rights and bicycles have right of way and oh man, like I'm surprised no one dies here daily. Right, here we go. So we turn right here. And then normally I would turn right on this little bit here. Look at that, look, you see that? Car went straight across. Such a dangerous bit of road. Literally just happened right in front of me. So this is more of a typical Dutch mm, housing zone, I would say. Um, these these shops and buildings to your left and right this is the cheaper end of the housing scale um, I don't know if the housing association style buildings or whether they're social housing where they get a discount on their rent I don't know I don't know I can't see any for sale signs and I don't believe I ever have which means they're probably just not for sale they're just rentals Well, I'll be glad that you're turning left, Mr. Volvo. I haven't got to follow your ugly back end. What a lovely day. It's a little bit overcast and 20 degrees. Little supermarket there, which I frequent occasionally. It's quite expensive. City, city supermarkets are always expensive, right? Right, so there's a foot crossing with a big old uh, bump over it. And, uh, yeah, this is this is quite a nice little part to live in, I would say. There's apartments mixed with houses, and uh, I walk my dog around here. This is very close to where I live, so uh, I think it's quite nice here live uh, on the right about five minute walk one minute bike ride 
Now the red parts of the road are obviously a bike lane and on this roundabout this is a give way to bicycles priority so wherever the bikes are you've got to stop for them and they pop out I'm going to turn off on this one they pop out on the right here this is a when you go to school in the morning that is like cars can't even move we can pop my visor down again Hopefully you can still hear me on this uh, video. Gowda's pretty small and we, we've just basically been in and out of it now. This is already very much the outskirts of it. I think I'm going to sneak around and just join up with this motorbike at the front here because uh, he's left a space for us. Lovely old Royal Enfield look. Go on pal, off to you all the way from Germany, having a tour by the looks of it, and all his luggage and stuff. I don't know why he's pulled over to the right. I think that I'm not going to be going by him, so he can carry on. And incidentally, as you can sort of see in the distance there, there's a big goods truck, heavy goods truck. And because everything is so sort of intermingled here, you've got industry and housing literally on top of each other. It means that you get those ginormous freight trucks right basically almost into the middle of the city because there's businesses dotted around inside the city that need them to transport their goods. So, uh, yeah. There's an old Mustang coming up. I'm not massively into American cars, but I'm sure people are. There you go, an old convertible Mustang. No idea what mark it would be, probably not the earliest one I believe, probably maybe mark two or three. And if you're into your Volkswagen caddies, there's a horrible one there. <laughs> We've got camo green wrap and a roof bar. <laughs> okay. Now this is uh okay, this is the, the, the lake. Unfortunately the reeds have grown up over it, but the other side of that reeds is, is a massive lake. I'll just stand up, maybe you can see it. No, not really. And uh, a lot of boating, so a lot of little sailboats and little pleasure cruisers. And summertime now, so they'll be out there that you can see them. If I just turn my head all, all the way to the right, you can see the boats, the, the sails. Which means that these uh, houses on your left here are sort of quite expensive because of the view. So that's really the posh bit. And uh, a couple of years ago they built a restaurant over there, which I've never been to, it's not really my scene. Ah, oh, Naked Runner, hello Naked Runner. So we're going to join up, um, the road used to go right here or straight on, and uh, they've uh, recently, well, 10, 15 years or so ago, built a, uh, this is a bypass essentially. I don't know why this German guy is waving to the learners because they won't be allowed to take their hand off the bars for waving. And he's doing that typical thing that motorbike riders do because there's a motorbike behind him. He's constantly looking in his mirror at me. I don't know why we all do that. Do you do that when you're riding your motorbike? If there's a motorbike behind you, you're just like constantly looking. He's dabbing all the time now. He's still looking at me again, again again he's just constantly looking at me in the mirror the whole time that's all right i guess because motorbikes are less predictable than cars i'm, I'm assuming I think that's maybe why we feel that way i don't know what the hold up here is but there certainly is one i've got to be honest i think if i wasn't cameraing i think i would have just squirted past them all no benefit for me sitting here at 12 miles an hour behind this truck all day. So I'd say we've officially left Gowda now and we're back out to the countryside area. We've got the motorway which is dead in front of us which we're going to go underneath and follow along the side of in a moment. Uh, and that's the service station truck stop thing there that you can see all the lorries parked up. That's part of the motorway system. So the motorway, uh, the, uh, I think it's the a20 runs right by Gowda, 
so to get to Gouda it's just like the easiest thing the road network is right next to it the rail work is in the middle of it there's a there's a huge bicycle network as well so they've really planned it out I mean the Dutch road planning is so good so clever how they do it uh, even this really is a bypass essentially around what is quite a pleasant housing area to your right there um, called Reewijk or Re Reewijk I don't know how you would read it R W -E R I J K or something like that oh there's a dead duck or goose or something there at the side of the road incidentally this country for, for that kind of if you're a bird watcher <laughs> come here because there's lots of birds and ducks and swans and geese and things that chirp right so we're now underneath the one direction of the motorway and we're going to go underneath the other direction of the motorway man this truck is going slow there's a fair old tail back behind us now and the worst bit is this road is no overtaking, so we have to sit behind it all the way. But it's picturesque. So there you go, you've got the motorway on your right hand side there. And on your left, more flat open fields full of geese feeding on the grasses. And uh, that's it. This is as good as it gets for motorbiking in the Netherlands. This sort of really flat really boring straight road this is actually an 80 km an hour road now it was 50 until we went underneath the bridge there and um, yeah what can I say 55 mile an hour 60 mile an hour the motorways you can only do 100k in the day so the fastest you can go anywhere in this country is 60 miles an hour that's between seven in the morning and or six in the morning and seven at night and then the speeds on some sections of the motorway changes but uh, I mean to have no overtaking here is oh, boring like I'm, at, I'm, I'm in second gear can't go much slower than this there must be 30 cars behind me As I say, if I wasn't filming this, I would have definitely gone past this truck by now. First gear, no point indicating because there's no one to tell. And then you've got these people on bicycles that, I'm sorry mate, just keep going. It's not your job to let them pass. Stupid. That's another thing I really hate as well. Like, the road rules are set, so just follow them and everyone's safe what that biker did there was stop and like essentially say to the person that wanted to cross the road hey you can cross the road but the biker has got no idea what I'm gonna do or what the car behind me is gonna do or anything so I really don't think it's a clever idea to be doing that and if the bicycle has to wait then the bicycle has to wait like we're, we're waiting behind this truck that's just what we have to do so yeah I think just follow the rules and uh, everyone should be fine I mean I'm not perfect I make accidents and mess up from time to time on junctions I don't know or I'm being silly or whatever but ultimately right well another one of these silly uh, roundabouts with the coping stones it. I'm gonna just hang five and go around this guy. This is an 80 here luckily so oh a bit of a breeze finally after being stuck behind that lorry for what seemed like an eternity. So ultra rural again and we're only a few kilometers outside of Gouda now so I think it really gives you perspective of how small the cities are and how big the areas are around them that are just agricultural and there's nothing here there's no trees or like I mean obviously some trees to my right but 
out in the farmland there's just nothing but grass I mean I don't even know what they grow here it's just grass for cattle I think I think everything is just imported because they have a massive oil trade deal with most of the rest of the world so the Dutch have ginormous investment in shell uh, oil and uh, and gas so and they also most of the stuff that they grow here is grown in greenhouses not out in the fields so right we should start seeing a load of bikers now because we're right by the motorbike shop motorway closed roads closed everywhere always I'm not going to stop in the motorbike shop but I'm going to cruise through just to it's the largest motorbike store in the Benelux zone, so that's uh, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. So you'll see lots of bikes around here, especially on days when it's open. Closed on Sundays and Mondays, so don't, uh, don't come here on a Sunday or a Monday because you won't be able to get in. Right, Good Heart Motera. Good Heart, if you like. And it is a fantastic shop. This bike is from here. There you go. I can do a little loop in here, so... He's a big fella. Oh, look. Put some tables and chairs out for eating. Clever. There's that bike that came round from the other way. Hardly able son. little KTM crew and that's it they also have like a clothing outlet store here so the older stock goes in there so you've got uh, almost all the brands all the major brands inside and then uh, uh, quite a lot of clothing and the um, the outlet store as well it's a huge store absolutely huge I'm gonna do a blog hopefully from inside I, I actually know the people that work there quite well now so with a bit of luck they're gonna let me do some filming in there and hopefully they're gonna let me take some bikes from there too for test rides and stuff which I want to film so there we go I think I'm gonna sort of wrap it up a bit now because uh, it's just really boring out here there's just no there's just nowhere to ride and there i'll tell you what there is a few places to ride and then there's just like speed cameras there all the time like any any time that you might want to go there they the police set up like hidden speed cameras all over the place and i've been i've been caught i, I was doing uh, 80 kilometers an hour in a 60 zone and i genuinely thought that it was an 80 road because there's no there's no road signs to show the speed limits so i was doing like 82 because i thought oh it's 80 if i'm doing 82 that's okay and uh, of course i wasn't doing 82 in an 80 i was doing 82 in a 60. so i've got a 220 euro fine great so there we go i think uh I'm going to switch you off now and I hope that some people have watched this and it was interesting and uh, if it was I'll see the feedback and I'll try and make some more. Thanks for watching.